Hey everyone, Walter Bound here, talking about Herman Melville and his great short story, Barnaby the Scrivener. Um, here we have some pictures of Herman Melville early and late in his career. We have the Berkshires in western Massachusetts, very beautiful place, and he lived here in Pittsfield, Massachusetts, in the Berkshires. Uh, our head, my wife and I were fortunate to have visited uh, a year or two ago when we were up in the Berkshires. Um... And it was from here that he wrote his famous novel, Moby Dick. Um, her, uh, he was a very famous uh, writer at the time, and the public just ate up his stuff. And then Nathaniel Hawthorne, of all people, I mean, these are all friends at the time, uh, came and visited him and said, you know what, yeah, this idea of Moby Dick sounds really good. Um, and it, through his study, his window, he saw the mountains in the background and saw the hump of a whale. And it gave him the inspiration to write his great novel. So if you get a chance to be in the Berkshires, it's not that far from here from South Jersey. Uh, it's a beautiful place to go. Um, visit Berkshires and visit Arrowhead and great place. So let's now start with a discussion of Bartleby the Scrivener. Hello scholars, Walter Bound here, just finishing up my lunch. So, you're reading Bartleby the Scrivener by Herman Melville today. Or you've read it already and you're out there in Morocco or Paris or anywhere where you're surviving COVID-19. And this story, it's long, but it's amazing. Uh, and you have to give it some time. Picture yourself Herman Melville, one of the greatest American writers of all time. One of the greatest writers of all time. You know, he wrote this little thing called Moby Dick. And he's been on the high seas. He's been on sailing ships, whaling ships. He's traveled all around the world. And guess where he's working? Wall Street, right? And what he's doing is copying manuscripts. Can you picture a mind like Melville just sitting in an office as a Scrivener? This is before Xerox. This is before copying machines. So if you needed to send something in triplicate, you needed someone to actually do the manual copying. Day after day after day. This is your existence, right? Working as a Scrivener in like a cubicle. And Melville writes about what he knows, much like Nathaniel Hawthorne working in the customs office, collecting taxes. He's Nathaniel Hawthorne, right? Great American writer. So many writers are writing or thinking about writing or want to write or self-publishing, and they're working menial jobs. They have to pay the bills, right? Um, you could be the greatest writer, but no one's picking up your novel, no one's paying you any money, and you're working as a postman, you're working in sales, you're working wherever you have to, to make, to make the money. And so what Melville does is he uses Thoreau's idea of civil disobedience, like, I'm not going to put up with this anymore. This is no way for human beings to live. I, I'm done with it. And all the other copyists there, you know, Ginger Nudd and all these different characters who he satirizes. One's good in the morning, one good, one's good in the afternoon, one uses, you know, cracks nuts and one drinks, and but uh, together they all get the job done. And because they, they have to cope, right? They, there's coping mechanisms to deal with this sort of existence that is just inhuman, all right? So we get, you know, we get uh, shows like The Office that satirizes this whole thing, right? Uh, we have the cartoons like um, like Dilbert, where they're, he's living in a cubicle lifestyle where you sit all day, you answer the phone. I know one of my first jobs, I had two jobs in sales. I was on the phone on a cubicle every single day. I was on the phone making hundreds of calls. I was fairly successful in sales, right? I still wanted to teach. Uh, thank God I'm doing that. But I'm like, every day I'm going to, the, I'm going to work. I'm like, the only reason I'm coming to work is because I have a family 
and I have a house and I want to provide for my family but I need to get out of this right so what Bartleby does is he gets out of it but he just shuts down and his boss is wondering what the heck's going on like why are you doing this and he takes such responsibility for Bartleby because he's like you know we're he's my brother right at first he doesn't want he dismisses him as being crazy or whatever but there's something about the boss that pulls him into Bartleby's world and wants to help him so much wants to help him because he realizes in some sort of Christian way or just brother keeper way or you know the Greek idea of like agape that I need to take care of you but once someone has decided to do to shut down as a protest it shuts down all right even if it means going to jail even if it means you know the whole dead letter office is like here we send these letters out but there's no one to hear our plea right so think about what Melville's saying here ultimately about our our human condition about you know if we send prayers up to God if we send prayers out to the world uh, will anyone be there to hear us? Will anyone there be there to care? Now, Barbie does have someone who cares, sort of, but in a way that may not be effectual or a way that may not actually help. So there's lots of themes here going on in Barbie the Scrivener, um, and we definitely see the, the civil disobedience, the total shutdown, uh, and what capitalism does to people. Um, that makes them machines and we want to be we want to be women we want to be men we want to be you know have something productive uh, with our lives and I hope you enjoyed the story uh, if you have any questions let me know uh, I encourage you to read uh, Melville's other work uh, other works um, you know Billy Budd and Type B and of course uh, Moby Dick you can skip the chapters when he's talking about you know the scientific things about whales because they're all outdated by now but it's, it's a fantastic story. It's, it's long, but definitely worth it, uh, especially with this COVID-19 now. You have time. Get it on Audible. Listen to it. It's a, it's a great story. It will stay with you. It will stay with you forever. Um, and Melville writes about what he knows, whether it's working as a Scrivener, right, to make some money, or whether it's traveling around the world on these sailing ships, uh, writing about crews and whales and um, crazy things like that. All right. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.